So welcome to Photoshop and we're going to be turning this image into a watercolor painting. And so you can do this with pretty much any image, but you want something simple and clean. That's just going to, something that's going to translate well into a watercolor painting uh, makes sense. If you have somewhat, some, an image with too much detail, it's just not going to work as well. So first thing we're going to do here is take our image and hit Command J on a Mac. Uh, it's Control J on Windows and we're going to duplicate that background layer and then I'm going to right click or control click um, on a Mac I'm doing the right click and I'm going to convert this to a smart object then we're going to go up to filter filter gallery and we are going to select dry brush and where I'm using the default settings sometimes you have to change these but for this was I think we're going to be pretty good so we're just going to hit OK. Next thing we're going to do is go up to filter and down to stylize find edges. So that's finding our edges in the image. We're going to come down here to find edges and we're going to double click on that little icon right there. It's going to bring up this blending options and we are going to change this to multiply. Um, now this is too dark, so I'm going to uh, lower this to where I think it looks good. So right about there, I think that's going to work good. All right, so about 50% on this image, and I'm going to hit OK. And then we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Smart Blur. And I just did this before. So I know it's around nine, eight, nine percent, and I'm going to use, we'll say, a threshold of like around 26, 25. All right, so that softened our image up and got rid of that. That's going to look nice. All right, so this part of the uh, turning this into sort of a watercolor or a painting is done. So next thing we need to do is get our watercolor paper, and so I have this paper over here. So I am just going to drag this over. So um, I've got the move tool selected right up here. I'm just going to grab this move tool and go up to this other layer. Go to the center, hold down shift and let go. And that will automatically center that image. Now we don't want this above, we want it below. So I'm going to go and drag that below. So now if we turn this off, we can see the watercolor painting is right below it. So we're going to click on the top layer of our image and I am going to uh, make a mask. So I'm going to come down here where there's a mask. I'm going to hold down the Alt Option key and click it so it automatically selects a black mask because we don't want anything applied there. Now I'm going to drag uh, my brushes over in here to this frame here for a second and, and we'll, we'll keep this uh, here. So let me slide this over. And we'll make it a little bit smaller if we can. Nah, it's not going to let us, but let me see how. Well, we pretty much got most of it in there. So we're pretty good. So I'm going to go over here and grab my brush. Now you can see I've imported uh, some watercolor brushes um, into Photoshop. So these are my watercolor brushes. Um, there's plenty of places you can find watercolor brushes. Um, they will be an ABR file and you just double click on the ABR file and they'll automatically load into Photoshop. So you can see down here it's kind of showing you as I click on the different brushes as to what they're going to look like. So these are very large brushes as you can see. So I'm reducing that size for my image. Now the trick to doing this is kind of changing brushes all the time as well as your opacity so if I come here I know that in my mask that I had the layers mask we're in black okay so obviously I've got to use white on my brush so when I select something you can see it starting to illuminate or start to show that image that is behind it so I can come in here and click on that and make that appear. So I don't care that I'm getting a hard edge up there on the top. We're eventually going to get rid of that. So I could use this. You don't want to do the same brush like 
because it starts to repeat like here and here the same uh, uh, you know kind of pattern that it just wouldn't look realistic so you're gonna constantly change brushes all right you can also change opacity and size of the brush so all I'm looking for right now is just starting to change this brush well, oh, it's pretty cool. Get this really large. And bring that in. Yeah, it's got a nice effect there. All right. Let's see what this one is. Up, oh, minimal with that. Not sure what this one is, but we'll bring it up. You can also rotate your brushes. So I'll grab this one. And you'll see me use this more a little bit later. But right now, notice it's more of a vertical brush. I can come over here and rotate this around. And then just kind of a little too much, I think. And then we'll just click there and illuminate that. All right. Get some of that watercolor to show through. I'm also going to hit X and flip my background to black. So I'm going to take a little bit of that up there off or away can't tell if this is a watercolor brush or not but it must be got a cool little splattering effect to it so it looks good we took a little bit away now I'm gonna put some back on that side all right hit X remove You rotate this one a little bit. I want the white, not the black. I'm going to rotate this this way and come in here and add a little bit more to that face. So basically you're just going to be kind of toggling or working your way through your brushes with different opacities and, and uh, different adjustments and trying different things and you're trying to either get things to appear or disappear within your image um, to get it to start to blend and looking how you want. There is no specific way on what this should look like or shouldn't look like. Um, as far as adding these textures to it. It's a little bit too strong, so we're going to lower that, remove some, but not that much. I don't want that over her face. All right, that looks pretty good. I don't think I'll use that one. Try one of these. Brushes. We're gonna make it pretty small. Not that small. All right. So once you're done with the process of kind of painting in black and white within that mask to make uh, different parts of the image either appear or not appear, um, you can stop. I would save that as a PSD. And this will allow you, if you decide that you don't like it in a couple days and you want to go back, you can easily take uh, parts of it out or back in by just painting back into that mask. So that is how you turn any image into a watercolor painting. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments below.